The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. First Week Podcast coming to you on March 7th, 2022, 23. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe it. We're a third month already. I'm still struggling with the year. How you guys doing? All right, it's been a lot. What else did the Soul Podcast? It was last week. Was it last week on the Soul Podcast, I believe? Um, it was last week, I think, right? Yeah, it was, uh, uh, actually, it was a bedcast, I think it was. Um, did a show from the bed. I'm, I'm, I'm back in the studio today. Um, things are on the up and up. Um, health update here, another one. Um, this is probably the theme of this show for the last couple of weeks. Um, things in my neck are getting better, obviously. Um, we'll continue to, uh, continue to see the chiropractor every three times a week. I, I didn't go today, though, unfortunately, because my, my youngest son, Logan, um, woke up sick and actually woke up sick at three o'clock in the morning with, with a best, with a stomachache, a bug. And we had to go to the doctor at about eight o'clock in the morning. So he kept him home from school. Actually, and I keep both kids home from school. Um, and, um, you know, it was one of those things where, okay, we just, 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 just be safe. Just keep on school for the time being. Um, but, uh, we did that. And then, um, we'd, uh, you know, I put my wife, my wife had to work a, a long day today. She's at work now. It's still currently, she's still to be up and up and, you know, go to work after all this. So she's just such a trooper. I love her to death. Um, but, um, I'm, I'm tired myself, man. Actually, I, I probably shouldn't even do this podcast, but I'm exhausted by what I've been itching to get back in the booth here in, in a week. Like I said, this, the, you know, like I said, we've been, there's a lot going on here at home for me personally. Um, um, but every, the neck issue is getting better. I'm back to, back to dealing again, back to, uh, on the tables again. I was, I was cleared, um, late last week. Um, still being cautious. Um, there's still soreness in my arm, in my arms. Not as bad though. I have a little numbness in my, my index finger still, but it's not as bad as it was. Um, Still, really can't do long podcasts. Like I, I, I know I did one last week with, with uh, Rob Barnett, like hour and a half last week. That was that was fun, but it was still a little tight. Um, but hopefully, uh, I would say by April, I'll be sh- I should be clear to back to normal. But I'm also really taking health seriously. I'm I'm actually going to do a um, uh, I'm, uh, a a uh, bonus episode this week. Um, this Thursday, I'm going to go to my doctor. I'm going to officially find out everything about my health. Um, I. I've said um, in the past, back in um, what was it? Late last year, we, we did an episode that was called Di- uh, "Bed Ick." Remember that little spelling acronym thingy? And uh, <laughs> and uh, I I had said that I was there's, there's a possibility I might be diabetic. Um, the early signs uh, do show that. Um, I took a blood test uh, last Friday, and I am going to find out the results this Thursday. So um, I will be. Um, doing a bonus episode this week probably focusing solely on that because I'm doing a lot of things here at home tr- health wise and I, I want to get into that I want to save that all that stuff for that episode when I do that um, probably Thursday afternoon I'll probably end up doing that once I find my results I found in the morning I'm kind of nervous but I kind of know where I'm at um, I've been uh, the doctor has had me on you know, logging um, my blood sugar for the last, uh, you know, five days of four days or how it is through Thursday, logging all that plus blood pressure. Um, it's been all been high, but it's been getting better. I've been eating, I've been eating better the last couple of days. I've been exercising a lot last couple of days. I, I've made some changes. I haven't had, a, I haven't had really any sugar. Um, I haven't had a soda really since last Friday. Um, I cut that last week. Um, I haven't done, I haven't eaten any sugar other than like the low carbs. I haven't had any sugar in, about five days and it's it's been you know it's been a challenge but you know again health is wealth and um you know i, I like i always say i want to I, I be allowed to see my kids and, and my wife and i want to see them get older and you know i want to grow old i want to be able to have live, live a long life and ha- a happy life and healthy life and i have to make sacrifices on that on that end but um we'll know more on thursday and i'll we'll do another episode on thursday um focusing all this because there's a lot of stuff going on here at home that i want you guys to hear about um I want to make this a community uh, also where my health journey is also a part of the show now. Um, We'll start having guests on the podcast of, you know, people who are doing the same thing and changing their lives for the better, you know, self-improvement, you know, um, so all those things. But I I, I want to focus on a lot of other things that are in 
interest right now in football. Uh, today was the last day before the franchise, before teams were able to franchise uh, players and all that stuff. And we'll get to all that soon as well, too. Um, I want to talk Kevin Durant real quick. Um, Kevin Durant, of course, now a member of the Phoenix Suns. Um, the Suns are, I believe, 3-0 since he has started. Um, I, I'm still on the fence whether or not they're actually a favorite in the West to win the West, to, to go to the finals, win the finals, all that. There's the things I'm seeing there, and you know the, the depth has been gutted because of, of that trade. and some Certain things I'm not really, I'm still kind of like, uh, let me... Uh, I'm not, I'm not fully on board 100% in terms of them being an NBA champ, NBA Finals uh, uh, favorite right now. Um, but Kevin Durant is complicated because we, I, and it's, this this uh this stemmed from a discussion I had on my um, in the group chat with my family. As you know, you know my, my 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 family on my dad's side, especially uh, my brothers and cousins and brother in law and all that. We all we all like to have we have our own group chat and we discuss a lot mainly sports and all that and. We got into a big discussion about Kevin Durant um, a couple of days ago, and it triggered me to want to talk about this on the podcast um, because we would we would talk about Kevin Durant, and you know, he, he, you know, I, I consider him a mercenary. You know, I consider him someone that is he he's not someone like people say. People, a lot of people don't would never put him in. A, in a lot of people would never put him in, a, in your in their top ten all time list because he had to leave Oklahoma City to go to go. You know, go to Golden State to win titles and all that, and then he went to Brooklyn and all that. And but I think one of the things we, I think we don't, I think we kind of don't understand, and I think society as a whole has contributed to this too. Also, is that we've made the argument now about how we view players in any sport, basketball, especially in basketball though, football especially too, but basketball especially, where you have more control both sides of the, both sides of the court. Where, unless you win a ring, you're not good enough. I, I spoke about this, about this actually on the podcast a couple weeks ago when Paul P- and Acidine take by, by by Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, who guys I respect, but Acidine take where they said that if you don't win a ring, you should not be in the Hall of Fame. And to me, that is ludicrous to even think that, honestly. Um, and but that's what he said. And um, so Kevin Durant has. Move places and and yet people have said that he's not top ten player because of that. You know, Kevin Durant has never claimed to be you know the when I say leader guy like like the, the number one um, in the sense like well, how we view Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, like guys who are not only you know the best player on the team, but the reason they win games and win titles. And Kevin Durant has never never ever like apologized for wanting to just play ball. I think we look at Kevin Durant in a way where, like, we you think he's a fantastic player, one of the greatest, player, greatest players of all time, sure, one of the best shooters of all time, and but because he doesn't lead in the same way we see Jordan Bird, Jordan, you know, Kobe, and that he doesn't up that list is why people have Steph Curry ahead of him because Steph Curry has stuck it on Golden State and he's been the the the, the leader pretty much. And I think we need to kind of, you know, I think the bottom line is that Kevin Durant is not more complicated to give him credit for. I think we have to kind of have a more nuanced discussion to talk about Kevin Durant's legacy. He's a mercenary. He doesn't care about being a leader. He doesn't care about how he wins titles. He wants the ball. Whether or not he goes to Phoenix and whether that goes to whether team he goes to, he wants to play ball. And he's he's never shy from that. He's never he's never um, you know said anything different. And I, and I think one of the things I I, I think I've come around on with him a little bit too, especially in recent years. Even though I like I would rather him stay in Oklahoma City. He's transparent. He, you know, we 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 sit here. We always say we want our athletes to be honest and be truthful, and just tell like it is. And then when we have that, and a guy like Kevin Durant, who's now granted he's doing it, doing it behind burner accounts, but uh, you know when he's honest and speaks his piece, we don't like it either. We like we don't like what he's saying, and that's kind of our fault. We're like we don't we, do we do we do we really know as sports fans what we want. And that and that's the kind of the problem we we I think we uh, we 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 have when it comes to judging guys. I think we need to get a place that we're coming around. Like, look, he he won't be in your top ten. That's fine. Um, but I think we need to give him a little more credit. I think we also need to 
understand that his legacy is more way more complicated and complicated to get credit for. You know, let's be real. He Oklahoma City situation was not good for him and with him and Russell Westbrook. How's that played out in rest, in recent years? He he looks like the, he did the right thing. The only mistake he ever made, really, honestly, was leaving Golden State, honestly. But he also wanted to try to do something on his own. They failed with him and Kyrie, similar to what happened in Russ. And, and okay, see, although I argue the, the situation with Kyrie's worse because at least Russ shows up and plays ball. You know, he's going to Phoenix now. And all he cares about is winning games. He doesn't want to play basketball. That's all he cares. He doesn't care how he does it. So, if, if you, you, I mean... If you're if if you the fan of tell is you the fan is saying to me that it's all about rings and all about rings that's it, then Kevin Durant is trying to is trying to answer your call. He's trying to answer your call because you're saying rings only rings matter. So Kevin Durant say, well, if I if I can't win this way, well, why, why are we moving the goalposts? We, we, you know, like we want Kevin Durant to win rings, but also win it in a way where it's satisfying to us. And uh, again, the legacy argument. Look, this is why I keep telling y'all I hate the Jordan Lebron argument because. In the, the day, look, I may think George is great of all time, but it's, it's an opinion. There's no really, there's, there's really no clinch best player of all time because that will say that my opinion is more valid than yours, and we're not going to do that here. We're not going to do that. So, all I'm saying is, this, this, give Kevin Durant a little more credit for that. A little more credit. Um, like I said, I would rather him stay in Oklahoma City with Russ and, and try to try to make that happen. But look, his decision. He's a free agent. He decided one to go, and that's it. So, but it's just complicated. So, one situation I'll tell you is not complicated, and I think we need to just get a little serious here, is uh, John Morant. John Morant, um, I'm really worried about this kid. Uh, you saw the video, uh, a video from the, on his IG, he was at a strip club, branching a gun. We've seen other things come out in recent months, and sort of st- sort of see this little turn, like concerns. There's a couple of things a couple of things we're seeing now that with John Morant, it was, that's a little bit concerning. And I'm not going to double down on, on this because, I, I mean, we've heard other people's uh, comments on this. And, I mean, by the way, uh, Jalen Rose had probably the uh, best, you know, advice for, for uh, John Morant on, on uh, an NBA countdown on Saturday. Um, this, I, I wish I had, had a clip here on, on the podcast I play here now. But um, but his his clip, the clip was fantastic. Um, look, John Morant. I, I I don't know what's 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 this meaning for him to want to be come off as this tough, hard, thuggish. You know, look, I may be rich and I may be a, a top ten player in the league, but I, I'm still here. I'm still tough, and I'm you know I, I haven't sold out, dude. It's overrated, man. Be corny. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be straight with you, man. Be corny. You know, I I like corny. That's who I am. Russell Wilson, look, he may have had a rough year this year, but and his stock may be a little lower going to this 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 off season. But Russell Wilson, I just saw a video with him doing a, uh, a father daughter dance. Um, his daughter I think was like three or four years old, um, and to me, it's wholesome as hell. I'm not saying he has to be like Russell Wilson, but c- corny is better. Corny is safe. This shit that John Morant's involved in, really honestly, and again, there's a lot of things that we don't we don't know is confirmed or not. He's going to get his ass killed for being careful or in trouble. This dude has hundreds of millions of dollars um, that he could be making in the next decade. He's only 23 years old. Okay? He's already secured the bag for the next five years with Memphis. He's probably getting the bag again going forward, okay, in the, for another five, five, five years. Plus endorsements. What are you doing, Ja? Now, to his credit, he's going to... He's seeking help. With this rumors come out now that he's uh has had some drug and alcohol issues recently. I mean that's what that's what's been reported. I'm not, I'm not saying it's true or not. This is what we're hearing out there in the streets. But Ja, he's got to clean this up. And 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 also this is also a call to action to his father T T Morant, who's heavily involved in his life. He's at every game, every home game, every road game. And I know that you guys are boys. You guys are like friends, but. T. Morant needs, needs to step in as a father. As a father. Step in. And help clean this mess up. Because John Morant is going to blow this shit. You know, get careful. He's about to mess the money up. And I, I don't want to see that. I really don't. So let's hope that this time away from the team, he's a, he's away definitely. There are rumors saying he may be out for the season. Who, does it include playoffs? Who knows? 
the Grizzlies are right now the two seed in the Western Conference. So it's, a, it's a big deal. Um, and you got a, a game tonight. As I'm recording this tonight, Grizzlies and Lakers. Um, LeBron not playing. John not playing. You know, it's about low management in the league and players sometimes missing games. Granted, it's not low management situation, but it's you know a game that again we could have Ja and LeBron on on well Ja at least on the on the on the screen, and we're not gonna get that. So, man, I'm tired. By the way, I'm really tired. I'm I'm partially doing this podcast for now, but you know I'm gonna push through. I'm push through. Um, but I mean, look, I'm Ja. I'm praying for you, man. Get your shit together, man. Get it together, man. You have a lot of time. You can change change uh, the 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 um the narrative about you right now, but you gotta you gotta put in the work and you got to. Make some hard decisions here. If, if if the people that surround you are not good influences, get them out of your life. Well, certainly get them out of your of your basketball life, but I will say get them out of your life altogether because they ain't good. Just saying. All right, switch up to the NFL here, real quick. Um, today, as I said earlier, was today is the uh, last day to before teams have to have their franchise players to teams to negotiate before you can start franchising players. So uh, Daniel Jones, I'm a Giants fan, of course, this is a big one for me. Daniel Jones and the Giants agreed to a new deal at the terms of four years, $160 million. There's a lot of opinions about this contract. So let's, let's, let's dive into it a little bit, shall we? Come on. All right. So here's what I'll do. I'll give you pros and cons for Daniel Jones' deal. I'm going to give to it as a Giants fan. Okay, not solely because I'm pro Daniel Jones or anti Daniel Jones or pro Giants and anti Giants. I'm gonna give you the pros and cons as a Giants fan. Why this is a good deal for the Giants? Number one, they get ahead of the they get ahead. Number one, of let me start here first. Number one, it's a short term deal. It's four years, one sixty. However, go deeper into the language. It's virtually a two year, eighty million dollar deal. It's virtually a two year deal. Okay, if Daniel Jones. Plays well in the next two years, he may secure another bag going forward for the Giants or elsewhere. Okay, this is why it's a good deal. It's still it's it's kind of like a backwards franchise. So number two, they came to they came to an agreement. The reports were Daniel Jones wanted forty five million plus. The Giants were offering thirty six million at one point. They came to the middle. Okay, if Daniel Jones, as I said, if he uh, if the, if Daniel Jones does not play well. Under this uh, this new deal, in two years, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, the guaranteed money runs on after two years, the Giants can cut him, but no guaranteed money owed. Okay, the Giants still have a lot, still have cap, cap flexibility, and here's the big one. I think no one's no one's noticing. Here's why it was dangerous to franchise him. Now, now, granted, I'm not saying he's as good as Lamar Jackson because he's not, not even close. But here's why it's important to. Secure the bag. If the Giants ever identify that he is good enough to be their, be the face of their franchise for the next couple of years, they've they've identified that. Okay, if Brian Dayball, the new regime, Brian Dayball and Joe Shane, Joe Shaw, how you, how you pronounce it, if they have identified that he is the future of this team, okay, it's about getting the right money and securing the money now. Had they franchised Jones, okay, and grant, and let's say no one put up. Gave up two draft picks to get him, you know, on a non exclusive tag, non exclusive tag, okay. And Giants and Jones played through the through the franchise tag next year, and Daniel Jones actually has a better year than this year. Had had a huge year. Guess what, folks? That forty million dollars you, you're worried about is down to fifty million dollars because, as I've been saying all along, yesterday's price ain't today's price. In other words, that price tag will be going up. And you see how the NFL salary cap continues to increase and increase, increase every year. Okay? And the Giants, by locking them in, they're guaranteed, if Daniel Jones has a phenomenal year or two, they got him on a bargain because the price tag will increase in the next year. Okay? And in the year after that as well, too. If Jones plays well the next two years, he's, he gets another bag. It's just that simple. So... There was there was no other way to to go. The, the Giants low risk, high reward. When you look at the economics of it all, this is kind of a low risk situation. Look, is Daniel Jones forty million dollars good? Uh, I have my doubts as a Giants fan, but at the same time, this is the market. This is like real estate. There are houses in the market out there that are four five hundred dollars, five hundred thousand dollars that aren't worth that kind of money. But that's the market. So what was it? What was it? What was it what, but here's the problem also too. There's a lot of giant fans saying, "Well, they should pay that kind of money." 
well, you can franchise him, of course, too, but then there's, there's a risk of uh, whatever. You know, who would you have gotten? Jimmy G? No offense to Jimmy G. I like Jimmy G, but he's not going to change your – He's he, if, if, if the Giants got Jimmy G, it's pretty much a stopgap. Okay? He's, gonna, he's a stopgap. Jimmy G would have worked for the Giants if the Giants were, say, drafting another quarterback and he needed a veteran to play behind for a couple of years. That's not the case here now. Daniel Jones obviously has talent, and he's he's good enough to be, I would say, worth the chance. And here's the thing. It's not a long-term deal. So, in essence, it's four years, 160, but really it's two years, 80. So, look look between the numbers. There's a lot more information there. Look at the language. So, I thought both sides here won because Daniel Jones now gets, gets the bag, and if he plays well under the short-term deal, he can also not, he, he's young enough to get another bag again also too, going forward in two, three years. So, win-win, Giants. Win-win for Jones, too, also, too. So, that's it. And and, and they and also, and again, they avoid the Lamar Jackson thing where they, they could have secured Lamar Jackson two years ago, a year ago. They chose not to, and now they're in the, in the situation, situation right now. Nice segue, Lamar Jackson, franchise for the Ravens today, non-exclusive tag. There's gonna be a, there's gotta be a team that's gonna put two two picks up. I, I'm assuming. Now rumors is that Falcons, Panthers, Dolphins have all said, according to sources now, that they have they don't they don't uh, uh they're not gonna they're not going to go after after uh, uh Lamar Jackson, which means now who knows? I, I don't know where this goes. Is Lamar here long term? He does have to sign that little franchise tag as well too. Also. Baltimore should locked him up a couple of years ago when he had a chance to. When his value was lower. And now, again, the market continues to go up. Now, his price tag is bigger now. Yes, Deshaun Watson had a lot to do with that as well, too. But the market was always going to go, was always gonna explode anyway. Maybe, maybe not to, to the extent of where Deshaun Watson's deal went, because the Browns fucked that up. But, you know, that's capitalism for you guys. Capitalism, in a nutshell. That's simple. My prediction is... Um, I'm gonna say he's still. I mean, it keeps his days be numbered, but I don't. I don't know if I necessarily b- believe these teams, the Falcons, Pan- Panthers, that you know, you know, the sources say that they're not gonna go after him under the franchise thingy. Give him two, two, two first round picks. I'm not convinced that one of those teams is gonna say you know reverse course on that. So, I'm um, I'm still fifty fifty on on on, on uh, Lamar Jackson returning to Baltimore next year. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So, but it's, it's gonna be it's, it's, the saga's not over yet. We still have a couple more months. So, Derek Carr yesterday gets his deal up in New Orleans. Um, I think right now on paper it makes him the favorites in the NFC South. Obviously, a low bar though, because the South was trash last year, straight trash. Tom Brady obviously retiring for the Bucks. Um, the Panthers are still rebuilding. Uh, the Falcons are rebuilding. The Saints are kind of rebuilding as well too. But you get Derek Carr there with a, with a, a pretty good defense in New Orleans. They should be they'll be, be a problem. Geno Smith got the bag as well too. Uh, three years, one hundred and three million dollars. I think it was um, a little over hundred million. Um, good deal for the for the, for the Seahawks there. Uh, Geno earned that last year with his play. Got, got the Seahawks to the playoffs last year and, and all that. I'm re- really proud of Geno there on the, on that on that aspect. Um, n- uh, update on the Aaron Rodgers saga. Um, Reportedly, the Packers are talking to him again, and also there's communication between the Packers and the Jets. So there's definitely some some traction on the Jets rumors. Um, the Jets obviously losing on their car. This is it for them. This is it's pretty much a uh, uh, brought us a bus. I mean, you can, you, can get, you can get Jimmy G, obviously, but I have a feeling Jimmy G is going to uh, to, to to Vegas, honestly. Um, so there's that. Um, like I said, free agency is um, next, about a week away, so we'll see how how that plays out. Um, but but Aaron Rodgers, what he's doing, also a lot of people a lot of people like very frustrated by Aaron Rodgers, what he's doing, how he's handling this situation. He has a right to do this. He, whatever he's doing is he's not doing anything wrong. Okay, he's trying to decide his future. Okay, there's no different what anybody else does. He evaluates. Nothing wrong with that. You know, he'll he'll decide when he's ready to decide. I do think the Packers want to get rid of him. I, I do think there's rumors. I do, I do think, you know, the fact that the Jets are involved and the Jets are talking to the Packers and all that and is that I think there's um, validity that the Packers do want are definitely interested in moving on from Rodgers regardless, you know, that big contract for starters. And then, you know, I think 
they feel better about Jordan Love now than they did a year ago. Um, so there's that. My opinion, I think he's back in Green Bay next year. That's my opinion, but we'll see. We shall see. We shall see. This is a play. This is a a story that's uh getting more legs now, and um, we'll see how it plays out. All right, two more things we got here. I'm really, really, really tired. Like I said, I'll drop another podcast later in the week. Um, so I was watching Bill Maher. Uh, I, I love Bill Maher. Um, Real time Bill Maher every every Friday. Though I don't watch it live. I watch it like days after, a day after. Um, he had on Bernie Sanders as his as one of his main guests on the show. Um, and I, I look, it's, it's, it's probably a little controversial, of course, for some, but it's not really. Look, I don't necessarily agree with all of Bernie Sanders' politics either, but. Here's why. Here's why I respect Bernie Sanders. Of all the politicians in in, in uh, I said Hollywood, but it might as well be Hollywood, right? Of all the politicians in um in Washington D.C., Democrat Republican doesn't matter. Bernie Sanders to me is the most authentic. Because at least what he says, he means. You may not like his politics, and uh, many do. Many many don't. Many some do. Many don't. Um, I know even the, the even. Democrats in my family who don't like his politics, who thinks they, they, they think he's too far left of, of them, especially when it comes to, it comes to the economics and whatnot. But the thing with Bernie Sanders I like is that he's he's always and he's always been this way. He's always been a kind of an anti anti establishment, you know, democratic socialist. You know, we we obviously the language on socialism. You know, people say socialism is bad and this and that, and there's the difference between socialism and democratic socialism, whatever. Yeah, I think we have, we, have, we have to talk about that here on, on, on the podcast. But I like the fact he's honest. I like the fact he's authentic. I like the fact that he says what he means. He means what he says. That's it. He moves on. He seems kind of ordinary to be around all the time. You watch him on on, on Mar. He, he seems very ordinary. But that's he's he's an old man. He's turning eighty. Now I don't think he wants to run president again. He, I think he said no because I think Mar had pressed him on that on the show. He said uh, would you another run, third third time's a charm. And he said uh, no. He has a new book out. He's promoting on there. I I'm thinking about buying that book just because I want to see what he's had to say. But I think I I just think Bernie's a very authentic guy. I'm not saying again. I'm not saying I agree with his politics. I I, I know, you know, the people in my family who do like him and some who don't. You know, politically speaking, but he's at least authentic, and I give him, I give I'll, I'll give him that. So, you know, that's that's not that's not an endorsement on Bernie Sanders or anything, but it just. I enjoyed the interview. Um, he had also he had a Russell Brand on. He had Russell Russell Brand and um, John Hallman on um, on the uh, panel. Russell Brand is a, is a bit much, man. I, I mean, some things we were saying that I agree with, but some things we were saying also he's a little bit a little bit too performative for me. Also, for my taste, to some degree, I, I thought he was talking over John Hallman a little too much. He's a little bit too performative at times, and just kind of like you know over the top with it. Like, like, dude, relax. It's okay. You can chick a chill pill, but. Um, that was a good episode of, of Marvel this week. Um, I need to I need to watch uh, the Chris Rock special. Not a big Chris Rock fan, obviously, but I, I've been told I need I need to watch it at least in some feedbacks. So maybe maybe um, next day or two I'll watch it and, and review it on this on the podcast. Uh, let me see what else before I get out of here. Um, Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump, um, Donald Trump is actually running a very smart campaign right now. Now, it's way early. We are way early. We're not even close to caucus season yet, you know. So far, we have what two people, two candidates running for the, the Republican nomination. Um, on that side, I know obviously him and Nikki Haley have entered the race. Uh, I believe that Tim Scott's going to enter the race at some point too. I remember about Glenn Youngkin. You know, you you would think Ron Ron DeSantis, our governor here in Florida, is already in. He's not in the race yet, actually, officially. But Here's why Donald Trump, right at least right now, on optics, is running a smart campaign. There's a lot of Republican figures that have become a little more vocal about wanting to sunset certain entitlements like Medicaid and Medicare and Social Security. And wherever your leanings are, we can agree that the majority of the country do like those entitlements in place. Okay? I would dare say a good two-thirds of the country, and I'm confident in that number, do want to have Social Security, um, at, at the very least Social Security, available to them when they retire. 
And you have some politicians. I, I, I think Rick Scott was one. I think at one point Ron DeSantis had, had mentioned, not saying he was one of the sunset it, but he had kind of circled around the topic. Donald Trump, to his credit, has said, now, look, he may not actually mean this really when it's all said and done because you know how Trump is. He says one thing and another. And, you know, he, he's, he's very chaotic when it comes to the things he says he does. Like Donald Trump once upon a time, weeks before he was inaugurated, said he was pro, he was for pro universal health care. So, again, and that, that, that's a very anti Republican um, um, platform or position, should I say. Donald Trump, to his credit, has said he would not let, he would not let the government take their health care. To, oh, not health care. Take their uh, Social Security or their Medicaid or their Medicare to his credit. And he's saying, no, look, 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 again, whether you believe, believe him or not, that's another thing. But the fact he's putting his mouth to ears, you know, whereas you have other Republicans who are dancing on the subject. It's a big deal. And that is one way. That is the reason why I think even if DeSantis was at this point, even if DeSantis went into the race, I don't think, I, I think, uh, I think um, he's he's been a nomination for the GOP because even if there is a tempered down, you know, excitement for Trump this time around in comparison to 2016, I do think he still has a stranglehold on a, a guaranteed quarter of the Republican base. And to boot, I've been saying this too, also for, for a while now. The more people that enter the race the better for Trump. Because all you're doing is peeling away votes from, for, for the other option. Let's say DeSantis enters the race, okay? If if those are only two nominees or uh, uh, candidates for, for the GOP, for example, you have a better chance of DeSantis probably winning it because more folks who are kind of tired of Trump will vote for DeSantis. But you have Nikki Haley in there. You're going to have Tim Scott in there at some point. You're going to have Mike Pence in there at some point. You might have Mike Pompeo in there at some point, Okay? And it's kind of the, the whole narcissism of it all. Like, if you guys really want to be Donald Trump, find one guy, one male or female, get behind them and call it a day. But they won't do that because hashtag narcissism. Just saying. Donald Trump will win the GOP, will win the nomination next year. That's simple. We're going to have Trump, Biden, too, um, in 2024, next year. Yuck. Anyway, that's, that would do for me on this podcast, dated March 7th. 2023. Uh, um, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I recorded uh, my, my basketball podcast earlier today. I'm exhausted. My kids exhausted me today with, with the, you know, them being sick at home and all that. So we'll go back to the next next one. Um, next, I'll record it probably on Thursday after my doctor's visit. I'll let you guys know my, my update on that and get, some, get the official word on whether or not I am actually a diabetic. We'll see. But, uh, you know, it's one thing, one thing is certain, though. Even if I am a diabetic, won't be for long. I'm turning the shit around. Trust me on that. I'm, I'm ready to put the work in now. And we'll discuss it in the next episode. So, love you guys. Take care. And until next one. Later.